Welcome to today's Postgres conference webinar, Power Use of Indexes in PostgreSQL, a User Perspective. We're joined by Jovan Augustin, Senior Support Engineer at Procona, who will discuss proper examples and demonstrations in order to drive users to the right selection of indexes and better usage. My name is Lindsay Hooper. I'm one of the Postgres conference organizers, and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. A little bit about your speaker. Jobin's a PostgreSQL expert and open source advocate who has more than 18 years of working experience as consultant, architect, administrator, writer, and trainer in PostgreSQL, Oracle, and other database technologies. He's always been an active participant in the open source communities, and his main focus area is database performance and optimization. Jobin holds a master's in computer applications and joined Procona in 2018. A few logistical notes for our attendees and then we'll get started. So the first is that I've put you all on mute to avoid background noise and to preserve audio quality. The second is yes, we are recording this and it will be live on the Postgres conference site by early next week. And finally, my favorite, questions are encouraged and will be answered after the session. You can ask questions as they come to you through the chat function either at the top or the bottom of your screen. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off. Take it away, Joven. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, so today uh, we are going to discuss about uh, the power use of indexes in PostgreSQL. And I took this uh, topic for this uh, presentation because of some reasons. We often encounter people using indexes, but they won't be choosing the indexes in the right way. Postgres offers so many varieties of indexes and, and each of those index can be used in multiple ways. So this presentation is all about the user perspective of the, the indexes, how to use it. Okay, before starting, I want to uh, thank my friend and colleague, Sergey. he's from Russia and uh, he's very instrumental in preparing this uh, presentation and many of the slides are prepared by, the content is prepared by Sergey. Thank you, Sergey. And today's topic, the Postgres index types. We have so many indexes, and today we'll be discussing about uh, these types like B3, hash, gin, gist, and spgist, brin index, and bloom and rum index. So uh, let's get started. So we can't start uh, a discussion about index without discussing about the B3 index. That, that's a, the base of all the indexes. So the B, the B3 index the, is the most common type of indexes. So uh, when we uh, create an index without specifying what type it is, uh, it will be the B3 index. Uh, and this, it's, it, is, it is the default. And this is the only index type supporting the uh, return of ordered output. So if you are having a, a query to, to have a ordered by, or, ordered by clause, uh, the, the, the B tree is the index to be selected. And um, this is the only index type supporting unique constraints, so a primary key. Yeah. And uh, uh, B tree index supports index only scans and range scans. So. This is a uh, specialty of B3 index. I'm not going to the details because we have to discuss a lot more. Okay, the, the B3 index is basically a tree. Uh, each leaf node stores the key and reference to the tuple, the TIDs. Um, it offers predictable search performance um, and every key look, lookup takes almost same time, same amount of time. It's, it's a B3. And Postgres actually uses something called uh, B-link tree or Bling tree behind. It's a modified uh, B3 uh, implementation. It has its own advantage. And uh, from the user perspective, the B3 index is best for unique constraints uh, and index only lookup, sorted access, and it is the best if we have high card cardinality data. So cardinality means uh, the, how unique is the, the, the value. And uh, the, the range 
uh, uh, B3 lookup uh, uh, range operation uh, returns uh, sorted output. Uh, uh, the optimizer can pick up the, the read index in a, uh, read the index for sorted result or uh, read the uh, read the heap and then sort. Um, the B3 index sort order is defined upon the creation. So we can have um, uh, ascending or descending order uh, creations. So we'll see the, uh, some of the examples in the, in the coming slides. And uh, please remember that every B3 index is uh, not suitable for a sort or access operation. Um, okay, so moving forward with a good set of examples. Here is a, an example uh, where the, um, the, uh, the uh, city ID is searched uh, in ascending order. By default, uh, the B3 index will be created in ascending order. So uh, as we can see, the, it is using an index scan. But what if, if we query the same data on descending order? Still, the B3 index can be used because it supports backward scan. So uh, the, it doesn't matter what is the sort order. It, it can use the B3 index. And what if there are multiple columns on, on the B3 index? So here is an example uh, where the order by close, the first column is uh, in ascending sort and the second column is also in ascending sort. So definitely it can use the B3 index. And vice versa, if both the columns are in descending sorted order, still it uses the backward scan of the of the B3 index. But what if one is descending and the another, another is in ascending order? That is where the B3 index fails. It, it can't. It can't uh, uh, really uh, do um, the, the uh, B3 index. So say, same is the case, it doesn't matter the order, um, say uh, one is ascending and one is descending. Uh, the, uh, that, that is where uh, the, the sort operation will be performed after the index scan. So as we can see, the sort happens uh, after getting the data from the index. Basically it, it, it gets the data and then do the sort. But that was not the case uh, in the previous case. In, in, in this case also, it uses indexes, but the sort is outside. And another is uh, another thing we should be uh, remembering is the B3 index can be really large because each leaf node stores the key and the reference to the tuple. So uh, sometimes we see uh, the B3 index um, at least half the size of the table or even bigger than that. So uh, there is no sparse B3. Um, uh, we have to store uh, every key, yeah, every key in the uh, data. But there is, um, we'll discuss about the deduplication um, effort in the, in the uh, coming slides. The, there is some star attached to this. Um, the wider the keys, more columns in index, larger the, larger the index footprint. So what is the solution for this? We can create partial index. So Postgres supports partial indexes. Um, and the partial indexes can create uh, all, 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 uh, index that only covers some key values. So for example, um, very, um, uh, say you, you want to scan latest few day dates. So uh, the, the index can be on, on that uh, column and the last uh, the date column uh, where uh, the date is below last one month or something like that. And uh, as I mentioned, um, there is index deduplication effort from Postgres 13. Uh, so uh, the index size is really small um, after the, uh, the deduplication effort, especially for those indexes where there are a lot of duplicate values are 
duplicate key values are stored. And it, it is suitable for uh, columns where uh, even null values are included. Okay. And coming to the partial bid index, this is something which uh, uh, users often forgets uh, that there is something like the partial index can be created. Um, this happens when when we have data for so, uh, data in the tables uh, for years and we are dealing only with the last few uh, years uh, months of data so we can have uh, partial b3 indexes it is possible to create b3 index on subset of key space uh, this basically uh, uh, allows to minimize the wastage if a column has low cardinality and only one value of the key is interesting, for example, uh, a flag, so flag saying whether the record is active, uh, then that is a criteria for creating partial index. And another criteria is the key distribution is skewed. Um, so there also uh, we can create partial indexes. And this significantly reduces the key, uh, the index size, and obviously the operating cost, uh, and it improves the query performance obviously because the index size is small. It can be cached in memory uh, in a better way. Uh, even the index scans will be faster because the index size is small, and it will not be uh, usable in queries that do not have filters. So the partial index is all about uh, having a filter. Uh, what is the criteria to have an entry in the index? Okay. So um, uh, we are going to see the details. Um, and here is an example. Um, say uh, we have uh, a table with uh, lot of uh, values where outstanding amount is zero okay um, and those are old uh, records basically and uh, we have a comparatively new set of records where outstanding value is not zero because it's ongoing transactions and uh, so those values are very less but we that is the set of data where we frequently act on. And um, though, uh, those uh, active rows uh, will, will be of more interest for our uh, frequent queries. So if we can create an index um, on those uh, column. Uh, this is the regular way of creating an index on outstanding amount. And this is uh, the way we, we can create a partial index on that column. Because th in this case, there is a work close because of that, the, in the, the index will contain only those rows or the reference to only those rows or only those keys where outstanding amount is not zero. And as we can see, um, uh when we create an index with every record um it will be uh, in, a, in a typical case it will be 21 mb but when we have a partial index in place it consumes considerably less uh space with all the improvements in deduplication in postgres 13 uh, still it is bigger than the one with without uh, with the the, the 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 with with the partial index. Okay, so there is a huge saving. So obviously, the process thirteen onwards, the deduplication uh, really does a magic in terms of uh, index size, uh, especially when we have a lot of duplicate uh, keys. And. Um, Partial index works uh, when our queries tells us that they don't need to skip the data. Uh, so um, here, is, here is an example. So um, uh, we are querying for those records where outstanding uh, amount is greater than zero. 
so obviously um, it, it can use this partial index uh, or we can we can specifically look for a value which is not zero uh, say 284 so there also it can use the partial index but if we randomly pick some uh, value so it could be even zero so the postgres optimizer won't go for this partial index instead it, it goes for a se sequential scan so um, now we know um, how effective the partial index is uh, and uh, where it it won't serve us uh, say when we uh, when we have a uh, condition which which is not predictable uh, the outcome is not predictable then uh, the partial index won't won't be helpful and coming back to the uh, the deduplication of b3 so this is this is one of the reason why uh, we should upgrade postgres to uh, postgres 13 or above uh, many of the index sizes are considerably small. Um, in, re in real world, uh, the key values are not so um, unique. In, in, if we can, uh, there, are, there are unique indexes, but other than that, um, the, the values are not so unique. And there are many occurrences of uh, few values. And few occurrence of many values. So it's a completely skewed. And uh, partial index is, um, is a not a universal solution. Uh, so we need to have a solution which uh, works for the other cases also. So the, the deduplication comes into picture um, and it is available from Postgres 13 onwards. And um, uh, the, what is uh, duplicate? Uh, leaf page. It, it, this uh, tells us about the definition because um, the, the definition basically tells that the key values are, are appearing in some other page that is a duplicate tuple, uh, and it is a um, it is a lazy process, um, and uh, do, deduplication can occur while creating the index or reindexing, and obviously there is a uh, performance penalty for deduplication effort. Um, and it can be disabled. Uh, um, we have an option to disable that. And in, in the latest Postgres, Postgres 14, um, there is an option, uh, actually there is a feature um, to deduplicate even MVCC uh, duplicate tuples. So uh, it avoids the space splits. Uh, so uh, this reduces the index bloat and um, there is a new concept of bottom up uh, index uh, deletion also introduced so the postgres 13 and 14 the b3 indexes are far superior than the previous versions uh, because of all, all of all these improvements okay and um, uh, there are some limitations for uh, uh, deduplication. Uh, the character types with the no, non-deterministic uh, collations cannot be deduplicated. Numeric types or JSON B type, um, uh, float, uh, container types, um, and in include in the uh, close. Uh, all these cases we cannot uh, uh, really use uh, deduplication. Um, so the, there are limitations with uh, deduplication. And here is an example of um, uh, deduplication. Um, so here, uh, uh, how to enable and disable uh, the dedu uh, deduplication. So uh, as as we already discussed, with uh, deduplication, the index size is seven MB, but with the duplicate values, it is uh, twenty one MB. This is a typical example, uh, but yeah, we, there is a huge saving. Okay, and I'm skipping over because of the time limitations. And uh, this is another important thing which uh, the end user should rem remember. Uh, the B3 index has the feature to have include close. Um, so we can have uh, other um, columns also included into the B3 so that they will be presented in the leaf nodes. Uh, this improves the index only scans because otherwise 
for those uh, columns which are not present in the b3 index uh, the table lookup is required when there is include option uh, the b3 can return the uh, the value from the leaf node itself okay and this is uh, all about expression index this is not specific to b3 but uh, it is available in other index types as well but discussing uh, with the b3 as it, it is commonly used with the b3 index so um, uh, we can create uh, expression index on, on uh, bit, uh, indexes uh, so uh, the the here here is a case um, where um, the lower um, uh, lower value of a um, column uh, can be effectively uh, indexed uh, here is an uh, without index it will be going for a sequential scan and a text uh, string match but if you create an index uh, on that uh, basically an expression index um, it results in an index scan Okay, and um, this considerably lowers the execution time and effort. Uh, uh, so uh, even the the full text search uh, or string comparison uh, become so simple because of this ex expression index. So expression indexes uh, look up by function values without having another column. Uh, so otherwise, without an expression index, uh, the, the alternate option is to have a generated column. So uh, the, the expression index has a substitute for um, generated columns. The, 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 the value, the expression value will be stored in the indexes. So um, the calculation and all, there is a lot of uh, savings in terms of that. And uh, going to the hash index, this is probably the simplest of all index because it's a simple uh, hash table, but it is notorious for uh, uh, its uh, problems historically because uh, previous to Postgres 10, uh, this was highly discouraged because it's not well logged and uh, it was not replicated. But now um, it is uh, it can be used heavily uh, wherever it is applicable. But there is limitation. Uh, as I'm, as we are, uh, as we know, the hash will work only if, if there is a equality operator. Okay. So it, the hash index is basically a uh, table uh, in in memory a, a table structure. Uh, so it stores the TIDs and the, the values and the bucket in the buckets, uh, the hashed hashed values of keys in, in buckets. And here is an example uh, from Wikipedia how the, the hash index works. So the, there is a bucket where the hash values of the keys will be stored. And whenever uh, the keys are looked up, the hash is prepared and it, it, it will be uh, searched in the, in the buckets. It's very simple. Uh, the bucket management is automatic. Um, uh, the function is predetermined. So the, Probably this is the one one of the simplest index types, and hash index storage is organized with the uh, multiple structures. One is a meta page where uh, internal information about the index is kept, and the bucket where TID and the key value hash is uh, kept, and there is a concept called overflow. So overflow pages also will be there, and. Uh, some of the important points which we need to remember is a hash index grow non-linearly. So it will be step-by-step -step growth uh, because the whenever a bucket pages are added, the size grows. And vacuum on the hash index does not um, return space. So um, vacuum won't help to free up the space. Uh, for freeing up the space, we should be really doing uh, re-index or vacuum full um, or uh, similar things like a PGD pack or things like that. Okay, and um, hash index uh, stores the hash to value. Um, and uh, another important point is hash value has a uniform size regardless of the 
uh, key length. Uh, so depending upon the uh, key value length, that can be uh, it can it can help us to minimize the storage. Uh, if the uh, the key value is larger than the hash value, then the hash, storing the hash value is cheaper, uh, smaller. So it can reduce the minimum uh, the storage. However, if the actual value, the actual key value is smaller, the hashed value will be bigger. So it, it can increase the storage. So because of the same reason, um, it is good for uh, big uh, key values. We are going to see some of the, its implication. And uh, the limitations are like, uh, it can only uh, serve the equality operator. Uh, no ordering is possible or no range lookup is possible. These limitations uh, limits its usage and purpose. Still, it can be used where a lot of unique and almost unique keys are um, values are available. And it is mostly useful when the, the keys are big enough. And it cannot be a base for unique operations. You, I mean, unique uh, constraints and things like that. And what will happen if the key values are small? Here is an example. Um, first, we have an, a hash index. It is uh, 28 MB. But uh, if you create a, a B tree index, it is even smaller. So a hash index is has a demerit here because the average uh, column length of the column is uh, only seven bytes. But what happens if the key value, uh, the, the, if we have a large key value? As we can see, if the, the size increases to, the, the average size increases to 16, uh, we have a slight advantage for a hash index than, the, and a, than a B tree index on the same column. And if we have really large um, uh, key, um, we have bigger advantage. And um, uh, there is one more point. Uh, the default fill factor for hash index is uh, 75 compared to 19 B3. We can even adjust the fill factor and we can see uh, a, a bigger saving in terms of uh, space. But yeah, the, the, we should be, uh, uh, if there is a lot of updates and things like that, uh, red, red, reduction in fill factor may not be a right thing to do. And here is an example where um, we have a lengthy key, uh, the, the URL. So in a table, we have malicious URL stored. So um, which normally results in a um, uh, lengthy string comparison and um, table scans and so if we if you have a hash index this value will be hashed and it, uh, compared against the hash index so um, it is as we can see um, it does a index scan hash index scan and we can have another um, normal um, the, the hash index on um, with the id column that also can result in, so it's because it's a straight away lookup. But as we already discussed, the hash index can't help if there is a non-equality uh, comparison. So that's where the hash index fails. And in summary, uh, hash indexes are good for uh, long key values. So like URL, so it, the hash value will be very small and it can be easily looked up. And it is uh, helpful in equality operator and single key lookup. Um, and it uh, because of the size, uh, it limits the write overhead, improves the query performance. And hash index are not so good uh, for cases where uh, uh, there is um, uh, no in index scan only uh, scan uh, index only scans are possible or uh, no, there is uh, cases where ordering or um, range operations are important so because uh, the hash index cannot support ordering or range operations yeah so um, the 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 hash values are stored uh, so uh, it can't really do a uh, index only scan 
and it cannot be basis for unique constraint. Um, it cannot it cannot be used for clustering the uh, table. Uh, and uh, for Postgres versions uh, below 10, it is highly discouraged because it cannot be replicated or well loaded. And uh, coming to the Brin index, uh, this is a block range index. Um, here is an illustration of a block range, um, say a series of values 124, 125, 126 up to 143. It's a series of uh, values. So um, instead of saying each and every value, we can say that we have values ranging from 124 to 143. This is how we even uh, tell in English or human languages, uh, starting from this value to that value. So that's the same concept uh, we use in uh, Brin index. So the, we just need to store the minimum and the max value. This is introduced in Postgres 9.5 and uh, it make use of the natural correlation of data with their physical location. And remember that this uh, don't really store the TIDs of the, the uh, TID values of uh, the column, uh, the, the rows. Uh, and um, in the concept wise, the table is split into a range of blocks. Uh, the default range is 128 uh, blocks. Uh, it, it maintains a summary of information about the ranges like min and max values. The, and many times uh, the Brin index is not considered as an index. Uh, because there is no TID stored or is don't have any property of um, index. It, it, it is just the min and max values of uh, a range and it works as an accelerator for sequential scan. So the sequential scan knows where to scan. So uh, it's an improvement rather than an, an, or it is a virtual partitioning method than an index. The process of indexing the data in Brin index is called summarization. Uh, because it, it, it really don't store the value, it requires a bitmap index scan. Uh, by read, uh, so it, it reads the summary tuple and comparing that with the qual, uh, query calls. Query calls means the, what is the workloads, the filtering condition. And uh, the tuple uh, will be compared, uh, the summary tuple will be compared and it can identify, okay, this value can be found in this range. Uh, yeah. And um, um, in order to improve the uh, insertion speed, uh, the, uh, the blocks at the end of the keep may not be updated um, in, in real time. So the Brin index is not updated in the real time. The vacuum and auto, auto vacuum scans uh, does the newly inserted block. Um, so the, the some of the work is, uh, the index maintenance work is offloaded to the uh, vacuum and auto vacuum scans. Okay. And uh, there is a new feature in Postgres 10 onwards uh, uh, called um, auto summarization. Uh, we'll discuss in the coming slides, uh, which will improve this, um, index maintenance uh, for some edge cases. Uh, and uh, there is um, improvement in Postgres 14. Um, so as we discussed, there is a min and max values uh, is what generally stored. Uh, but now in, from Postgres 14 onwards, we can have multiple ranges. Uh, so if there can be a gap in between. Uh, this allows more efficient handling of data with a poor correlation with the uh, physical location. And because if there is inserts and, oh, sorry, updates and deletes happen, the, the gaps will form. And uh, this is a, a sample syntax, which can be used uh, for a, a multi, uh, if there is multi ranges. And another feature in Postgres 14 is that uh, the Brin index can use Bloom filters. We'll discuss about the Bloom filters in the coming slides. And the Brin index is best uh, because it, uh, for those cases uh, where it can result in a really small size and it is fast, uh, fast in insertion updates uh, because the work is offloaded to the, the vacuum or uh, the later, later job. And it is best for time series data because time series data is sequential in nature. Um, and um, 
And wind index need to be avoided uh, if there is a lot of uh, raw migration happens uh, because of the updates. Uh, and in, in that case, uh, please consider uh, reducing the fill factor of, of the table uh, so, so that uh, the hot, hot updates will be um, happening. And uh, one common mistake when people compare the brain index is that uh, they compare the performance of uh, the query performance alone uh, with the um, query performance achieved by B tree index. Uh, the, so the B tree index has higher cost in maintaining. So obviously the, that will result in better uh, query performance because it's, it's, it's a lossless uh, uh, index of bigger size. So there is a cost associated with the B3 index, but of course it can give a slightly better or some comparatively better benefit. The B3 index is, is much cheaper to maintain and um, uh, produce. Uh, so uh, it may not be able to produce that if, uh, high result um, as compared to B3 index. So here is an example. Um, if you create a regular index, which is a B3 index, in a typical case, it uh, uh, results in 114 MB size. But if you if you produce a B3, sorry, Brin index, it's just a few KBs. So it's a 72 KB, so see the difference. And the, uh, the Brin index allows us uh, to specify the, the block ranges. So by default, um, it is 128 uh, uh, pages per range. Uh, but we can reduce it for more granularity and accuracy. Even if it, we reduce to a smaller value, still this saves a lot compared to the, the B3 index. And once we change the, uh, the pages per range value, uh, please remember to re-index. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, we already discussed the, the summary session, not a summary session. Uh, have, uh, happens or summary session happens by by auto vacuum, uh, but uh, we can even manually do that uh, by executing uh, bring summarization summarize new values. This uh, is a statement like this. And coming to the uh, the auto summary session in Postgres ten onwards. Um, so uh, as we discussed uh, previously, it was uh, taken care by uh, the water vacuum or, or vacuum, uh, which can happen at any time um, down the line. So if the table is not a candidate for auto vacuum, it may happen after quite a long time. But now from Postgres 10 onwards, um, yeah, the, the, uh, there is option to explicitly make a request to auto vacuum to do the job. Uh, the auto vacuum is uh, still in charge of processing this request, but it will be processed uh, before the, the auto vacuum hits, hits the uh, table. Uh, but remember that this auto summarization session is default, uh, disabled by default, uh, but it can be enabled at index level. So here is an example uh, where we modify the uh, pages per range and auto summarization. session. And this is a one frequently asked question. Uh, how do I identify best candidate for um, uh, the, the brain index? So here is an example where we see that um, the information from PG stats shows us that there is a higher correlation. Um, and many times we won't get one, but it will be near to one. So those are the columns, which is right candidate for brain index. And coming to gene index, uh, it is it is a, uh, index where uh, the um, key values are not stored in the leaf nodes. So, uh, but the, the key values, uh, the, uh, normally we know the key, uh, key values are stored uh, the, um, in the leaf nodes uh, in B trees. So, but here uh, the, the values are stored in entry tree. There's a separate structure for that. We'll see that in the coming slides. Um, but the, the reference to the, the nodes, uh, the, there is a separate data nodes uh, where, where it, the um, column references are stored. Um, so uh, coming to this. So this is the entry tree, which, is, which looks like a normal B tree. This is where all the values are stored. And uh, there is a posting tree uh, where the heap pointers are um, uh, stored. 
and there is a separate pending list also maintained for uh, up, uh, new values to come. This is the uh, gene index structure. So since uh, the, the, the values are not stored in the, the leaf nodes, uh, it's an index which is considered as uh, inverted. Okay, and uh, gene index are uh, good for uh, uh, text searches, mm. and uh, it is um, um, good if the the values are less frequently updated because we know that the values need to go to the entry tree and the references are kept in the uh, leaf nodes. So, if for um, if, if the updates are frequent, uh, the gene index maintenance become heavy, and the best. Uh, for less cardinality columns. Um, so this is just opposite to the uh, bit tree index. And um, uh, because there is the, the, the uh, less cardinality, cardinal, cardinality columns can be fit in the entry tree more efficiently. And this is an example where uh, the gene index is used if, uh, for a text search, uh, say a lengthy uh, statement like, uh, hello, how are you? Uh, um, so uh, the TS vector can pull out all the, the lex important lexemes out of that, uh, say, which need to be catering to the text search. So age, hello, and my name, this uh, the TS vector identifies. And now this can be indexed. So um, here is an example where uh, the functional in the expression index is used. Uh, so only these values goes to the entry tree. This is very efficient. And um, the, the gene index supports uh, some storage parameters, uh, whether we can um, set the pending list size as well as uh, whether there is need to be a fast update on. The pending uh, list size globally can be uh, checked, yeah, but it can be modified at uh, index level as well. And uh, one beautiful thing about gene index is it is extensible. So here is an example where um, Postgres provides uh, B-tree gene index as, a, as an extension. Uh, it is available in the contrib module. This is very useful uh, because um, uh, Postgres uh, don't have uh, index corresponding to bitmap index in uh, other database systems. So there uh, we can make use of uh, the bit region index. And uh, many times we see up to 20 times space saving if you, if you use. Uh, so it's an example of extensibility of gene index. And of course, uh, there are disadvantages. Uh, gene index may not be a great idea if there is a lot of uh, transaction because the, we need to maintain the entry tree. Transactions uh, occasionally get delayed. Uh, this is one of commonly reported problem. Uh, and before selecting the gene index, uh, please uh, make sure that we understand how it works. Uh, and the search must scan the list of pending entries. Uh, so all the new entries comes in the pending list. So the, the search also has a slightly higher hit uh, when there is a lot of frequent updates. So um, these are the list of uh, some of the um, common uh, demerits of um, uh, gene index. Coming to Bloom index, it's a Bloom filter. Uh, basically, it's a Bloom filter, and it, it uh, tells whether a value is existing in a set or not. So it can uh, the false positives are accepted. So possibly in the set is, is good, um, but um, it, the Bloom filter should say that definitely it is, uh, the ne there should not be any false negatives. So it, it should say that definitely it is not there in the set. So um, since it's a, a low C uh, index, uh, false positives are allowed, uh, the recheck keys are required. Uh, and it can be considered as a space efficient uh, uh, hash partition, uh, hash index, uh, because alt, uh, uh, internally it does uh, multiple hash functions. So, uh, and uh, the, it is available as an extension. Um, 
So in, uh, as I mentioned, it is uh, multiple hash functions. Uh, I, I usually picturize it as a signature or a signature. Uh, so the signature length can be adjusted. So there will be more content in the signature. Uh, so it can un uniquely help to identify the record. And it is best for multi-column indexes uh, where equality com comparison is uh, used. Uh, and another uh, important aspect is the column position of the index is not important. Uh, we know that the column position is important in B tree index. Uh, so second column in the index may not get the ask, uh, uh, higher search criteria for a B tree index. So, Okay, so uh, here is an example. Mm, uh, so um, the, the, there is a query on total amount. Um, and um, the total amount is the last column of the index, but still it uses the uh, index, the, the Bloom index. Okay. Um, it works. And um, efficiency increases as more number of columns are specified. So in this case, uh, not only the total amount, but booking reference uh, also men mentioned. So uh, the index recheck has to perform very less number uh, the, compared to the previous. Uh, recheck has to do uh, a lot more. Yeah, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, the signature length can be adjusted. Default is 80. And um, uh, the, the signatures um, for each of the column also can be adjusted uh, based on the preference. So um, uh, the total length of the signature can be specified and uh, we can say that the column one can uh, use two uh, bits um, and uh, column three can be, can use four. So, uh, we, we can specify the, the importance of each column in, in, in the Bloom signature. And uh, you know, uh, there, there is a, a limitation. Uh, so we don't have operators for all, all the data types. Uh, so, but we can create um, operators uh, using the existing uh, functions. Here is an example where uh, operator class is prepared using hash function. And as we discussed, uh, the Bloom is uh, lossy in nature. Uh, it cannot be useful for unique keys, uh, result in bitmap scan and uh, rechecks. Uh, Bloom does not support for searches of null values because there, is, there should be a uh, signature. And coming to GIST index, GIST is a generalized uh, search index. It is similar to B3. Um, and it is a very generic in nature and it is required because Postgres supports a lot more data types than just common, for example, geo data types, images, documents. So normal operations cannot be performed on these uh, uh, data types. So uh, for all these uh, arbitrary data types requires arbitrary operators. For example, we, can, we need to search for a location in, in, the, in the area. Uh, uh, so the GIST acts as an extensible framework uh, for building new access methods. Uh, so uh, there can be um, and uh, overlapping data. We'll uh, see some of the examples. And it helps in text searches. Uh, and it uses signature tree when it comes to text searches. And the GIST index disadvantages uh, efficiency of a GIST may degrade over a period of time. So uh, you may we may have to uh, re-index uh, sometimes. Um, the updates are always problem for just um, uh, index. And uh, here is an example of uh, uh, R three index created out of gist. Uh, so as we can see, uh, there is a box, um, outer box uh, R one uh, and R two, uh, and that contains uh, smaller boxes. Um, so this can be represented as a gist uh, tree. So R1 uh, and R2 contains other boxes. And so um, we can, this kind of index can support searches like uh, whether the a point is inside a box. So this is a um, normally uh, general data types won't support this kind of searches. And we can even search for 
points uh, point order order by the distance from another point say uh, p uh, and its distance from another point or well, this is order by close and it supports um, main, uh, the uh, other uh, operator types so we can even um, create our own custom operators so these are some of the examples of operators like uh, strictly left uh, whether a point is on the left or right or uh, coincides with another point or uh, uh, say whether it is in a box or a polygon or a, a circle so we can we can create a lot of uh, operators and these are um, uh, available in postgres by default and this is one of the frequently asked question uh, since both supports uh, both the gin and just supports text searches uh, which one is better so gin uh, is faster in lookup just uh, is comparatively slightly slower in lookup uh, but gin is slower in updates just uh, is faster in updates so gin stores the lexemes uh, actual lexemes the, uh, but uh, the just only stores the signature and uh, gin uh, rebuild uh, time dip depends on the maintenance workman uh, and just re uh, main, uh, rebuild doesn't depend on maintenance workman. And this is an um, improvement in Postgres 13. Uh, the TS vector, uh, the, uh, the just um, index, the, the signature um, length can be adjusted. So, and it's the same, once we adjust the signature length, it will be available even in, while displaying the tables. And uh, these are some of the more specialized in, indexes, uh, uh, SPGIST and uh, RUM index. Uh, so SPGIST stands for Space Par uh, Partition Digist Index. So it is a non-balanced tree. And uh, the concept is all about repeatedly dividing the search space into uh, partitions that need not be equal in size. So uh, divide the space uh, into a non-overlapping non uh, areas. And, uh, so um, uh, SB just is suitable for structures where the space can be recursively split into non-intersecting areas. So this is useful for quad tree or um, k-dimensional uh, trees. And uh, so he, uh, an example of quad trees available here. So the, the space is divided into further and further recursively to a to a to the minimum uh, to a point. So uh, the searches can be uh, very efficient uh, using uh, space partitioned uh, index. And uh, the RUM index, uh, this is an extension. This is an example of uh, index as an extension, uh, uh, and. Um, uh, it is based on uh, gene access methods uh, and um, one advantage of our uh, the, the regular uh, gene index is that it even stores the positions of lexemes if, if you recollect the, the discussion about gene index uh, we uh, the ts vector identified the lexemes and it, it indexed but the position position information was missing but RUM index can even help to capture that position information. And the position information is uh, important when we have a phrase search in uh, as uh, text searches. And the disadvantage of uh, RUM index is it is so slower to build. Uh, insert time is higher than gene. And another disadvantage is it uses general wall records, not as uh, so normal wall indexes will have specialized wall records. This general wall records are can uh, result in a lot of wall generations. Yeah, the, those are some of the disadvantages. So we have seen uh, uh, almost all types of uh, uh, commonly used. Uh, index types in Postgres. And uh, here are some very good references to um, the, some, uh, some of the index related discussions. And by this, I would like to conclude my presentation. And thank you, everyone. And thank you for attending this uh, conference. And I, thank you.